missed Kaylee. Kaylee had a different adventure this summer. We missed Kaylee at camp this summer, but if you remember, we prayed over her as we were getting ready to be sent out to camp and go do ministry up in the mountains. Kaylee went and God gave her a platform to go and compete in the Miss USA, and she is Miss North Carolina, so how incredible that we have Miss North Carolina here at New Path this morning. We love Kaylee, but we've gotten to see her come up through the youth. I'm going to let her share her testimony of what God did, but I want to just say I can remember meeting Kaylee, what, a couple months ago, a month or two ago. I remember us having lunch together, and Kaylee had been through a lot, and I remember just saying, she was like, I'm done. I think I'm done. I don't think I'm going to do another pageant, like she really felt called to do it, but she went through a lot of injustice, and I don't want to steal her testimony, Um, but I just remember praying with her, and I said, don't let the enemy steal what God has for you. You've come so far, you've worked so hard, don't let the enemy steal. Uh, The enemy always wants to to steal what God has, and so I said, just pray, pray and see what God wants, but I really think it's to continue, and then I'll let you take it away. (laughs) Yes, you need a mic. I have a mic. (laughs) Okay, so hi, everyone. My name is Kaylee. I love Jenny, and I love Corey. They've been in my life since I was two, so she's like a second mom. I even call her Aunt Jenny. Yes, I love you. There's a little backstory (laughs) behind that. But um, growing up, I was severely bullied. So for many years, I felt very insecure. I felt unworthy, and I would have never thought I would be a pageant girl with the confidence and the hair and like all this stuff, you know, getting ready to compete. So my piano teacher was a former Miss North Carolina and she encouraged me like, hey, this is something you can do to boost your confidence. You should give it a try. So I did and I went to my first pageant a few years ago and I lost. And then I went to my second pageant and I lost again. And then my third pageant, I had good feeling about this one, but I lost. So it actually (laughs) took me eight times before I went and won my first local pageant. So this was just on the local level. Um, So I'm like, you know what, this is it. God has called me to win states and I'm gonna go in and win and all this stuff. And um, I lost. (laughs) So yeah, we had a pretty good streak of losing and not winning. Um, Well, I got bullied at States last year through a different organization, and there was a lot of injustice that happened, and I never wanted to step foot on stage again. So I was so hurt. I was telling myself and even Jenny that, like, look, I've been bullied, I've been hurt, and I don't feel called to this anymore. So long story short, I met with Jenny, and Jenny helped me a lot, and also, like, praying, my family, my friends, they were all encouraging me, like, hey, give it one more chance. So I was like, fine, but I'm doing a different organization. So I went and did a local title and ended up winning, so I was with City of Oaks, and then I was so hurt from last year at the state competition, I was like, okay, something needs to change from last year's state competition into this year's. So I decided I would make it my number one priority to put God first. I wrote Esther 414 on the bottom of all my shoes that I would compete in. So I was stepping onto stage with my full purpose and all my potential glorifying God. And Esther 414 is you were born for such a time as this. I was seeing so many signs with fours and 14s. My gown actually got caught on a number 14. And then the speaker right next to it was called Crown K. Like that was the brand name. I'm like, okay. Um, The street that I was getting coached at was called Crown Oaks and I was City of Oaks. So I was seeing a lot of signs, but I wasn't getting my heart, you know, set on it. So I end up going and winning my state competition and glorifying God in any ways that I can. We were praying backstage with people. I actually prayed with one girl who's Greek and I'm Greek and she was praying with me in Greek and it actually made the news, which was pretty cool. But um, I got to meet the judges afterwards and one of them came up to me and she said, the moment your foot hit the stage, you stood Mm. out. And I was like, Wow, interesting. <laughs> What's the on the word of God? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then also another judge said how he didn't want to actually judge. He thought about quitting three times because he was so busy. But God ended up telling him, you know, you have to go and you have to crown someone that's going to honor you and glorify you. 
So he was like, you were the only one out of all 50 contestants that talked about God in her interview. So um, I would say a few, <laughs> a few takeaways is no matter like your story or your background, everyone's going to have hills and valleys in their life. Everyone's going to have a different story, a different journey, and this was just mine. But also, you were born for where you're at. God has you, and I'm so grateful and all of our youth to have such amazing youth pastors always serving and meeting with us no matter how busy you guys are. So thank you. Love you. Proud of you. You were born for such a time as this. Isn't that amazing? And don't you love that testimony of the moment her foot stepped on the stage? That's the word of God and the anointing and the favor of God.